Hey everybody, Ghost Critic here again. It's a Thursday. Comic, new comics have come out. More new DC issue number twos. Um, and it was amazing. I was really digging the issue twos this week. Before I get on to those, um, just a quick mention about the raffle competition that I um, put up with my 100th video. I am cutting it off this evening because you guys have just been absolutely great with all the questions and I've got to go through them all and uh, think about what I'm going to say to make sure I've got some videos up at the weekend answering all your questions and also picking our winner! Yes, someone will win that stack of issue number one comics. You don't know what they are, but they're good. They're good. They're an eclectic bunch of issue number one comics. So yes, I'm cutting it off tonight. I will go to bed. Then I will wake up in the morning. I'll print off all the questions and I shall start writing some answers down and thinking about the video. So on to comics. This is what we're here for on a Thursday. It's comic book day. Comic book review day. Let's start. It's the final part of Schism. Number five of five. And I... This week it's going to be really hard to try and not to spoil things for you here. Um, so I'll kind of keep it as spoiler free as I possibly can. Um, we ended issue four with Scott and Logan duking it out with each other with the oncoming Super Sentinel uh, making its way to Utopia to absolutely trash it. Um, and it still picks up there in issue five. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> you have this huge Super Sentinel on its way and Logan and Wolverine, all they care about is kicking the um, out of each other. Um, so, as good as it is, it's a bit crazy. Um, uh, cavalry come in from a place that we kind of guessed would happen anyway. Um, and the ending is quiet, I would say. Contemplative? Is that a word? I think you know what I mean. Um, I really don't know how else they could have ended this. Um, we both, we both knew, we all knew that, um, you know, Wolverine and Cyclops were going to part waves because um, obviously they've got their own new titles on their way. Um, and it is... The end of it is the split between the two uh, and how that happens. Um, a bit of a low-key ending, but still the, the last panel sets it up nicely for the Wolverine book, at least. Um, cons about this, things I didn't like. Too many artists on this title, way too many. Um, and it really did put me off a lot of the times. I mean, Kubert's in there and his pages are stunning. They're really nice to look at. But you've got some guy called Roslyn and Keith in there. Um, I'm not sure which pages they did. But uh, their styles were very, very different from each other. And it did kind of take you out the story a lot. Um, so that was a bit kind of icky for me. Um... The only other thing that really kind of has annoyed me about the whole thing um, is Scott, Scott Cyclops is um, just the whole his whole attitude at the moment. Um, I don't know whether they're gearing him up to be some kind of almost villainous character now. Um, his arrogance and his pure stubbornness at not even you know considering. Um, Logan's point of view in that, you know, you're throwing all these kids, I mean, mutants or not mutants, what you're doing is you're throwing children into a war. Whether, whoever it's against, whether it's against super sentinels, whether it's against humans, whether it's against other 
super-powered mutants. Um, they are kids. And they shouldn't be there as, you know, Scott says, these soldiers. They're just kids. And he will not see it any other way. And it really, really annoys me. But apart from that, I think the event has been great for X-Men and I'll be very interested. I'm I'm going to be picking up Wolverine and the X-Men because, hello, Chris Bacalow's on the art. Fantastic. Um, I, I won't be picking up Cyclops' team. I think he's heading the uncanny. Um, so, yeah. If you've not started picking this up, I would wait for the trade. It is worth a read. Um, plenty of different artists in um, each issue, but too many in the last one. <clears throat> now on to the DC that I collected this week. And let's begin with Batman Detective Comics issue number two. And I did give this first issue a really hard time really didn't like it um i even read it again just to be sure uh, that i hadn't missed anything because you know a lot of people said it should have been higher in my uh my top list from the last video but no it really really did not feel like it should have <laughs> i i don't know but issue two was a damn sight better forgetting the first half of the the you know the first four or five pages which are just abysmal um we've got the um <coughs> the business guy and the whole male testosterone flowing trying to climb up cliffs in the middle of buildings um all that ridiculousness and then the reporter. Oh, this was so badly written. Um, the characterisation of this female reporter was just so poorly done by Tony Daniel here. Um, you have her being this kind of hard-nosed bitch. Um, you know, she's dressed provocatively. She's showing huge cleavage. And, you know... Bruce Wayne, that's all he's looking at, and she's not happy about it, you know, it's the whole, my eyes are up here, Bruce. But then she just goes and snogs him, and in the next panel, she slept with him. Poor. Very poor. But after you've got all that crap out of the way, and Bruce is in the Batman costume, and he's going out, um, he's gone to Arkham Asylum, um, meeting up with Jim Gordon, um, following all these leads, becoming the proper detective that we know he is, it gets really good. Um, again, I don't want to spoil it, but we get introduced to, I think it is a new villain. And as with all these new DCs, it seems, it is very, very violent, very horrific. I don't know what is going on with DC at the moment. They are seriously not, like, family-friendly comics here. Um, but I'm loving it. Detective Comics number two, so much better than number one, and I'm happy for it. Penultimate issue um, of the pickups, it's a Swamp Thing number two. Again, wasn't incredibly impressed with issue one. It was a good, solid title, but something is kind of missing for me. Issue two, again, delivers more. Um, <clears throat> it seems that Scott Snyder is playing around with the kind of origin of Swamp Thing again. Um, what he, um, what's that, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, what he symbolises, um, uh, his past incarnations, how he has come to be. And we have hints of the green and the red. Which is nice because it fits in, hopefully. It'd be nice to see a little crossover with Animal Man. Um, so yes, that is nice the artwork inside the paneling work is interesting it's a little busy at times 
but very good. It's another, it's DC are knocking these horror titles, and this is a horror title, out of the park. They really are. Um, again, much better than issue one, much higher up on my list now of um, must reads. Pick it up. So what's my pick of the week? Well, if you would watched my last video of my countdown of what was good, what wasn't, you will know at the top of the heap the stellar title that was Animal Man. So I don't think it comes as any surprise to anyone that issue number two of Animal Man is my pick of the week. Seriously. If you have no money whatsoever, if you only have money to buy one comic, please, please pick up Animal Man. This, I mean, issue one was fantastic. Number two, it is out of this world. I kid you not. I mean, first, just look at that cover. It is just amazing. Inside, I mean, Jeff Lemire and Travel Foreman, they were made for this title. Jeff Lemire is writing the most macabre tale. He really is. And added onto that Travel Foreman's artwork, which is just horrific. I mean, until you've seen these hippos, pregnant hippos, you will not understand what I mean. It was just page after page after page of pure genius and brilliance. I cannot recommend this title any more than, I, than I'm doing now. Um, kids with creepy powers in horror comics creep me out and Animal Man's daughter Maxine is no exception. She may be kind of like on the good guy's side but she's creepy as hell. She really is. Um, her powers, however she's getting them, wherever she's gotten them from, um, they are certainly blossoming now. Um, it's not just dead things that she can bring back to life. And it's, it's scary. It really is. This is one hell of a title. Please go out, beg, borrow, steal for this. I can say no more. That's it. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, if you're new, go up there and subscribe. Um, if you want to have a chat with me, tell me what you bought, what you thought of what I bought. Do you not think that Animal Man was great? If you didn't, who are you? Um, put some comments down there. Remember, there's a thumbs up button as well if you like it. Um, that's me. I'm out of here. See you at the weekend. Don't forget the raffle. You've got till the end of tonight. Bye.